this morning because we have in the house a very special guest speaker. As we enter into the new year, we are invited. We have invited Becca Greenwood. Becca, go ahead and stand up. We just want to honor you again. The Bible says whenever you, you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. And we receive a prophet's reward in this house as we welcome you again into Skyway. Thanks for coming up. Amen. Thank you, guys. Greg, come up and say hi again. Yes, I want you to say hi, too. Um, sure, that would be wonderful. Good morning, Skyway. Woohoo! Susan, where did you go? The woohoo warrior cry. Woohoo! No, <laughs> there you are. <laughs> it's so awesome to be back with you guys and to be here in Arizona. And um, gosh, it was seven years ago. Was it seven years ago? Uh, the first seven years ago, September 2009, seven, seven years ago, the, uh, woohoo! And, and so when I came for the first time to be with you guys, and so I'm excited, well, you know, we're, we're teaching on seven. So anyway, and so Jack and Deb, they mentioned that to me yesterday, and I did not realize it's seven years. And I came to teach for Wagner Leadership Institute, and my heart just connected with all you guys right away, and y'all just can't get rid of me. So we just keep coming back, and yay. Woo! And I just, we love you, Greg and Don. Thank you for loving us and just being in friendship with us and inviting us into the house. And just, we, we, want, to, we want to honor you guys and say thank you so much to be here on the first Sunday of the Hebrew New Year. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready for a new year. Are you ready? <laughs> and so anyway, so where did you go? Oh, he's sitting. So I want you to say hi to everybody. Everybody remember Greg? Yes. This is my Greg. And so um, I remember, remember last time I was here preaching and I was sharing that story and everyone thought it was you. We won't mention that. That was very funny, though. Okay, here we go. Hi. It's great to be here with you guys again. Uh, just remember, she asked me to come up, so this is not my fault. <clears throat> it's really good to be here. I, I mentioned to the early service that when I left my house the other day, it was 37 degrees, and coming to 96, that's just, that's just wrong. Um, <clears throat> but it is great to be here and, and to be with you guys and see you and you know how when you're reading the Bible and you start looking at things and you see something different in them that you never saw. So since she asked me up here, Greg, I can do this. I'm going to take a couple of minutes and you're going to follow me. <clears throat> so I'm reading and I've read this since I was in the kindergarten and went to Sunday school and I've been reading this forever. It's the sad part. <laughs> and I'm referring specifically to me. <laughs> Um, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, suitable and pleasant, this is the Amplified, and he approved it, and God separated the light from the darkness, and he called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Now, <clears throat> that's what we read and know that that's what the Bible says that God did, okay? And I kept reading that chapter. And you read all the other good stuff, and I'd read it before. And then I got down to verse 14 in Genesis 1. And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days of the year. And let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was good. And God made two great lights. The greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. Now, wait a minute. I just read back in verse 3 that God created light, right? And God created dark, and he called one day and one night, correct? That's what I read in verse 3. But I just read in verse 16 that God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. Now hold on. So there was light before the sun. Right? 
before God made the sun, there was light. There was day without the sun. I just violated every scientific principle we know. <laughs> because I just told you that without the sun, there's still light. Now, when you fast forward to, we're not going to go through the whole Bible. When you fast forward to the New Testament, God said you are the light of the world, that we're new creations in Christ. So I think what God told me in that is that we are the light that can change the atmosphere. Amen. Okay? We are, and it's, I, you know, I, I thought about Moses because, you know, he went up on the mountain, he had to cover his face because it was too bright. You know, some of the kids probably used him as a nightlight because you just take the veil off and you got a light and you're good to go. Um, that, that there's something that we do and that God uses us to do that produces light. Now, it says he created them to govern the day and the night. Something that we do in prayer is govern what goes on. Because the sun governs when we get up and when we go to sleep. The moon governs when we go to sleep and when we get up. Because we're naturally affected by that. Get my eyes back on. Here's an interesting word that we talked about earlier. It's transcend. One of the definitions of transcend, the theological of the deity, is to be above and independent of the universe and time. To be transcendent or superior. The Bible says he's given us authority to tread. We are the ones that are to govern what goes on in society. When Jesus came into the room, there was a bright light. It wasn't the sun, it wasn't a star, it wasn't the light bulb or the translucent bulb. It was the light that he carried. Our mission in our day-to-day -day life is to walk into places and to let the light of who Jesus is come out of us. When you walk into the grocery store and you walk into the gas station, you're to bring a light. And... and you know, we always teach, and I think she knows where the Bible says this, the natural reflects the spiritual. What we do naturally reflects what God's doing spiritually. When I start to go into places and people come to me and say, <clears throat> um, let, me, let me try that. When any new ager is there and I walk into the room... And they look at me and go, there's some kind of aura about you. <laughs> now, I want them to ask that question. I don't want to go up to them and say, let me tell you about something that's not right about what you're doing and how you're worshiping the earth and the moon and the sun. And let me straighten you out. I want them to come to me and say, what's the light that I see in you? Over and over in the Bible, God is reflecting in the natural, what we're supposed to be in the spiritual. There's day without the sun. You know, they tell us we've got to be worried about the sun going out because that's going to take away. No, it's not. There's still going to be day. Because God is over the universe. He transcends what we think our natural light should be. Acts 2. Acts 2. Acts 2. There's a natural light that comes from us. We have to work to be that light. Amen. So don't depend on the sun anymore. S U N. S U N. Good word.
And so it's the perfect lead-in, actually, to the message of what we're going to be talking about in 5777. How many of you know that we're in the Hebrew New Year? And, and you know, and I was saying in the earlier service uh, that, um, you know, it's important to know the times and the seasons. Did you even hear what Greg was reading from Genesis, that he put the sun and the moon, the, great, the light, greater light and the lesser light, so that it would mark the times and and the seasons. And so we are entering into a new day and a new season on the Hebrew calendar, and it's 5777. And so it's so important to know what is this saying to us prophetically? Because when we understand what God is saying to us and the time and the season that we're in, we can align with that, we can agree with that, we can see what God is doing and saying that we are going to agree and move forward with him to be in the fullness of effectiveness that he wants us to be in for him and in our lives in this season. Amen. And so I gave this example earlier. You know, when I teach the message, I never teach it the same way twice. Is that okay? And so, woohoo! And so, but the reality is, is when we, uh, and when I was sharing this earlier, when, when we are establishing a business, a business person, and I agree, Lord, we call in the seven millionaires in this house, in this year, in 5777, in Jesus' name, that there will be prosperity that is released within those, within the house for the kingdom of God. Well, I, woo -hoo. I want that, Lord. I claim it for me. We're taking that seven back to Colorado, and I'm claiming it for our ministry in Colorado as well. I'm claiming it for Span. Lord, we want seven in Span that will become millionaires. Woohoo! We want seven in Colorado Springs. Is everybody good? I'm, I'm like, all right. But the reality is when we establish a business, when we are business people, we get a plan in place because we want to prosper. There is a goal. And so when we understand the seasons that we are in with the Lord, he wants us to be intentionable. Intention I keep coming up with new words, simplical and intentionable. I'm, it's Becca language. It's new tongues. Okay. But the reality is, is God wants us to be intentional in our walk with him. It's like I said earlier, if we don't understand what God is speaking, and if we don't have a vision for what's going to play out in our lives, then we can't build in the now for what he wants to do with us in the now and in the future. Without a vision, people perish. And so we want to hear what is the Lord saying? What is he speaking to us right now? And with this Hebrew year, 50, the, the five thousands, I said it right this time, that this is actually the saying that the Lord is speaking, may this be the year of. So when you have like that first number, it's like saying, may this be the year of of okay and when we have the 70s it's like there when you see this like prophetically with the hebrew calendar it's like this i and what this i means is god is coming causing us to come into prophetic understanding enlightenment seeing being able to see what he is saying in this time in order that we can agree with it now i want to say this and i don't i think I think I didn't mention it in the first service, but God is going to take us in an ability to see in this realm, in this, in this heavenly realm, in the angelic realm, even more than in the past season. That there are more for us than who are against us in this season. And that there's angels that are being dispatched. Now, you guys have seen a lot of angels in the house you, over the years. And God is releasing angels. And he's going to cause us even to be able to see even more prophetically even in that angelic realm. Now, I think it's really way cool when we get to see something like that. Yes? And I only get to see glimpses. All of you that get to see all 
all the time. I just think that's really pretty awesome myself. And so I always say, Lord, I want to see more. I want to see more. Open my eyes to see more. And, and those of you that have heard me talk about our oldest daughter, she sees all the time. <laughs> and so when you have a child like that, you're like, Woo, all right. But when we're able to see, it pulls you personally and corporately into the destiny that God has for you. We want to build, right? So here we are. We're in 5777. This number seven literally means that it is a number of completion. It is a number of perfection. Woohoo! Yes. And so what is happening in 5777 is God is allowing our spiritual eyes and understanding to be opened that we are in a season of completion and perfection. And the symbol, the prophetic symbol of this Hebrew New Year is a sword, a two-edged sword with the crown, the Jesus' crown, the crown of glory sitting on top of that sword. Now, I said in the first service, I made a public confession. I'm going to make it again because Greg was, Pastor Greg was saying, do you have PowerPoint? And I went, no. But then this morning, I was like, man, I, I should have a picture of that if I'm going to talk about this. And so uh, I made a public confession. Confession. I'm going to say it again. I need to get better at PowerPoint this year, and I'm going to try to, to discipline myself to do that some. <laughs> okay. That's cutting off something from the old. Anyway, but the reality is this two-edged sword, what is so awesome about this sword is that it's double-sided. And so what God is doing, it's like our processes are in process right now. It's like we have come out of a season, and with this sword, the Lord is saying he is cutting off things from the past season that need to be cut off so we can move into the fullness of a new season because seven also is showing covenant with the Lord. And so the reality is if we have woundedness, if we have trauma, if we have things from the past season that have hindered us, this sword is coming down and it's cutting through and it's breaking off those things from the past season. We can't take woundedness. We, amen. We can't take trauma from the old season into the new season. Do you know what happens if we do that? It causes us not to hear accurately, and it causes us not to function properly in the fullness of what God has for us. So he's taking that sword, and he's cutting those things off from the past, and he's saying, now that I've cut those off, we're now going to go into this new season and establish a new covenant. We've completed, we've perfected the old season, and Lord, we're coming in and covenanting with you. Ooh. Lord, I want a new covenant with you. How many of you have felt a resistance in the past few, just even in the past two or three months? How many of you felt that? Yes. And that resistance and what, what that is, is, is we're going into this new place and the enemy is wanting to come. How many of you know he does not play fair? The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Now, I'm going to say something. If we're in the year that, is, that the sword of the Lord is representing this year, it is also the year of the warrior and the spirit of the warrior to rise up. Now, you know that I am a warrior, so that makes me very happy. Woohoo! The warrior cry. Woohoo! That warrior is going to rise up in me. But ma'am, let me tell you, I'm being real transparent. There has been a resistance that has been happening, even with me, in the past three, four months of the enemy trying to come saying, is God really going to do what he said? Now, we've seen God do amazing things. I have been in five different nations in four different months, and we have seen God do, um, and uh, across the U.S., amazing things. But guys, we are in a transition season right now. And when you're in transition, it doesn't always feel real good. How many of you are in transition? 
I mean, almost everything we're involved in right now, and some of them I like and some of them I don't like. But the reality is when you're in that transition and you're in this season, that resistance, it starts to come and push against you because the enemy wants to rob your voice of praising the Lord and saying, I am going to stay the course even in the midst of this transition into the new. It says in Psalm 149, verse 6, let the high praises of God be in their mouths. The high praises and the two-edged swords in their hand. It didn't say sword. Swords in their hands. We all have it. This isn't just for Becca Greenwood, Greg Greenwood, Pastor Greg, Pastor Don. It is for each of us in the body of Christ. And when the enemy, and you guys have heard me say things, but this is so true. There is a grace for this in this season. That when the enemy comes in to push back and resist. We've got to open our mouths and we've got to begin to praise the Lord, magnify the Lord, glorify the Lord, not allow the enemy to keep our voices silent. I will not allow you to rob the sound of the voice of the kingdom of God from my mouth coming forward, Satan. I will worship and I will glorify who he is. It's a two-edged sword. So we're going to praise him. We're going to worship him. Oh, we got a picture. You guys rock better than I do. Yes. Woohoo! Hey, can y'all send that to me? It's the beginning of PowerPoint. Praise God. I'm in the prophetic moment. I know my prayers are being answered already. Woohoo! This is it. I mean, how powerful is it? And do you see the light? Greg's talking about the light. And I haven't even gotten to Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. See, the beauty of this sword, the, the year of the ruling sword, the sword of the Lord, is not only is it two-edged, that things are being cut off from the past season. You went through it. You completed it. You perfected it. It's getting cut off. And now we're going into covenant with the Lord. And in this new covenant with the Lord, where Dutch was even saying the other night at Global Spheres, if you watch it, we're sevening with the Lord. We're covenanting with the Lord. See, think about it. When creation, when God created the earth, seven days. There are seven churches. Oh, there's so many sevens. I mean, when I got home from Dutch speaking the other night, I was opening up and going, oh my goodness, seven, 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 seven. Seven. When they marched around Jericho, how many days? Seven. When they carried the ark of the Lord, it wasn't about an object. It was about the fullness of his glory and presence. The ark was the mercy seat of God and the place of his glory and presence. And when they would carry the ark of his presence, they would take six steps. And if any of you saw Dutch and I told him, I said, can I take that? He said, yes. And so, but you take those six steps and literally the other day he was crying, mercy, each step that he, mercy, 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 mercy. And then they stopped. And before they took that seventh step, they made sacrifice to the Lord. Seven bulls, seven rams, seven, seven, establishing covenant with God before they take that ark. And they take that seventh step into that place of covenant and mercy, carrying the Lord's glory and his presence and his hope and his mercy and his fire and his love. 
In this year, 5777, the Lord is saying it is time to cut off the woundedness and the trauma from the past season and to come with a double-edged sword, a new covenant with the Lord that we will be the light of his glory. You are glory carriers. We are hope carriers. How many of you have had the delay of promises? Oh my goodness, we're going to read another scripture and, and we're going to talk about how we're in a season of seeing those delays where they're, they're going to stop and they're going to end. Psalm 24, verses 7 and 8. This is the kind of authority. See, God is battling on our behalf with us this year. There are more for us than there are against us. There is more for you than who are against you. And the reality is, as we are moving into this new season and we're representing the King of glory, Greg was saying that word transcend because of what I was saying earlier in the message. See, we are not to conform to culture. The church transcends culture because we're of the kingdom of God. We are ones that transcend with him. And who are we transcending with? Lift up your heads, O oh, you gates. Woo! Are we a gate? Yeah. And be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of that the king of glory may enter. Who is this king of glory? Listen, the Lord strong and mighty. He's not a wimpy God. He is a mighty God. The Lord mighty in what? Battle. When you are in a battle, you take this sword of the Lord. You take the prophetic words. You take the promises of the word of God. You begin to praise him. You yield the sword and the king of glory will be mighty on your behalf in battle. I asked how many, how many of you, you're in transition, how many of you had delayed on promises? <laughs> we are in that season that that delay is being cut off. And we are entering into a season of fulfillment where there has been delay. Now, I was sharing this testimony in the earlier service, and I'm just, y'all y'all know me. I, I did good. I stayed up, like, how long this time? 25 minutes, both services. I'm, but I, when I hear these testimonies, I just love to be close to you guys. We have been praying for something very specific for three years, Eddie and Alice Smith always taught us, our mentors taught us to believe, journal, and ask God for specific things. Lord, we need this. Lord, we need that. And, 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 and pray into them. And then when you get the answer, put the date next to it. For three years, I have been praying. We have been praying into this specific thing for our ministry. Specific number. Praying into this. And so the enemy kept coming to me, even in the past three to four months. You think God's really ever going to answer that one? Do you see how long it has been there? When are you going to stop praying and believing for that? Have you ever heard a voice like that? But there is something we have to understand, guys, is that we are also in a season of God blessing generation to generation. And so the reality is I'm like, okay, I might not have seen it, but I'm going to praise my God and I'm going to believe that he is good because he is faithful even when I am not faithful. He cannot deny himself. His word will not return empty and void. So I just kept believing in God, even if I don't see it in my lifetime, I'm going to believe for my girls and the generations to come. So here we are, and we get a phone call a month ago, and we go to this meeting, 
And we're in this meeting, and this person says to us, you know, the Lord, I really feel like I'm supposed to do this, and says something to us. <laughs> and and, and I, we, he likes, we're keeping it anonymous to bless this person. So anyway, and so, because they want it that way. So anyway, uh, we're honoring that. So said something specific to us. Oh, thank you. This is wonderful. Woohoo! And then I thought, well, okay, it's some of what we've been believing for. You know, yay, right? Then he calls what? Three days later, and he said, he goes, I, I have to talk to you guys, and I have to talk to you before Becca leaves town. The Lord got me home that night. He woke me up in the night. He corrected me because three years ago, he told me to do this and to do this amount. And he said, and what I said to you the other day was not the correct amount. Three years ago, he told me to do this for you. But he said, because of circumstances in our lives, it got delayed because I got distracted. I am no longer going to delay this, and I'm doing this for you today. And it was the exact thing that we have been praying for for three years. We are in a season where delays are being broke off and we're going to see a suddenly moment where those things that have been promised are going to happen suddenly in an instant. Something that had not appeared will be there. <laughs> so there might be somebody that had gotten distracted and in circumstances that all of a sudden they're going to come running to you and say, I'm no longer delaying this. I'm being obedient to God. Here you go. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> this is the kind of season that we are in. No more delay. Yeah. No more delay. <laughs> Ooh, Lord, we want more of that. No more delay. He is the Lord mighty in battle. He told Joshua, be strong and courageous. He is telling us in this season, be strong and be courageous. Listen, the scheme of the enemy in my life, and I've seen this with other believers in some of my travels. Now, I will also say this. The hunger and the passion for God, that remnant is increasing, increasing, increasing. We are in a season... But I'm also seeing some because there was that delay that they got. It. We're getting into this place of we prayed and we believed and, we, you know, and this, they're, they're in this transition. We're transitioning into the new season. So the enemy's trying to stop it. But what they don't realize is God's also hovering over us in his glory because in this place of tension, he's also wanting us to lean in and hear the Holy Spirit. Walter, we were singing about the Holy Spirit. And hear what he's saying. And it might just be a whisper. Oh, but God, I'm hearing you even in the midst of the resistance. So I'm going to take that step and whew, more glory comes. I'm going to take that next step and more glory comes. I'm going to praise you and more glory comes. I'm going to decree your word and more glory comes. So we got to realize, don't let the resistance stop you. Say, hey, praise God. I am on the right track. I'm going to keep going forward. Because if I'm getting resistance, I must be doing something right. If I'm not doing anything right, then I'm not going to be resisted. But boy, when I'm doing something right, I am going to be resisted. So praise God, I'm going to move forward. I'm talking about the enemy resisting us. Spiritual warfare. This is the year of the warrior, can you tell? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I was going to read another scripture, wasn't I? No, is that where I was? Psalms, Isaiah 60. Are, are you guys good? Be strong and courageous. You know the beautiful thing about our God, too? is sometimes 
He's asking us. I can't. I, I, I got it. What did I say? Isaiah 60. Okay, this happens when I get here sometimes. I just get in that place in the spirit and I get scattered. In a good way. It's a good scattering. It's like squirrel, right? Go that way. Oh, do you realize when you're in that prophetic flow, some of you realize that you're not just hearing like one or two things. Sometimes you're hearing multiple things and getting multiple revelation at the same time. And sometimes it's a little bit like, God, can you slow it down a little bit? Cause that was really good. And I'm going to say this and I'm going to forget to say that because I'll have something else by the time I get to the next thing. Do you realize sometimes you can get in a prophetic river like that with the Lord where it's like, Whoa, man, hold on. I can't keep up. Lord, we want more of that. It's flowing right now. So I'm like going, woo, woo, woo. So, yeah, so I'm going to read Isaiah 60 and then I'm going to keep, are y'all, you good? Isaiah 60, you guys heard me teach this scripture before. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. This light, Greg was saying it, we are the light. He is the light. We are the light. And when we arise, shine, it literally means that in this place of arising and shining, that we've abided, we've set ourselves apart, we have covenanted with with him arise shine that your light you become the burning torch listen Moses looked at the burning bush we are the burning bush hey wow <laughs> I don't know. Moses saw and looked on the burning bush we are that burning bush there were the candles on the lampstand in the tabernacle of David my friends you are the candle you are the fire of the lampstand wow <laughs> Lord let us burn we don't want to just blaze. We want to burn on fire for you. Arise, shine for your light. The burning bush, the light, the light of the Holy Spirit. We are the living torch. Has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. When it says upon you, and guys, we can keep reading, and it goes down to verse 3 and, and verse 2, and it says, but the Lord shall rise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. Listen, when we burn for God, when we are the torch of God, <laughs> What it means when that he has seen that glory upon us, it is visible, it is tangible, people see it, they know it, they know something's different, and it's also a warfare term that means that we are encountering a military head before we go into battle against him. Let my burning today torment darkness. Let my burning today give the enemy a migraine. Let my burning today awaken a nation. Let the fire of God so fill us that we are that burning bush that nations will run to God. Hey, hey, we have a double-edged sword, put it in your hands, God, I've got the sword, and it's crowned in your glory, hey, whoa. And it's got the light. Not only does it have the light, but we're the burning bush on fire. 
that when we wield the sword of the Lord, it is the hammer coming down in the spirit. It cuts and it shatters. Darkness must flee. Darkness must flee. And I'm speaking a prophetic word, Arizona. Do not let the fire go out. Arizona, burn, 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 Arizona. Arizona is a burning bush state. And from Arizona, we take the sword of the Lord, the ruling sword of the Lord with his glory. And we take it and we wield it again. And we say, We are in covenant with you. Glory carriers, fire carriers, hope carriers, mercy carriers. Mercy, God, for the nation from Arizona. Mercy. There's not only a fire, but there's a wind. There's not only a fire, there is a wind. Because when you become the burning bush, the wind of the Holy Spirit will blow across it and it will blaze across the land. Spreading. Spreading. You seeing it? <laughs> you feeling it? Lord, we release the sound of the wind of the God, of God and the Holy Spirit and the fire of God. Just shout hallelujah. Jesus reigns. Jesus reigns. Darkness must must flee. Darkness must flee. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Woo! Hey! <laughs> hey! All right. I know I've said this before, but I'm seeing the eight fires in Arizona. I'm seeing the flames. And Lord, right now we fan into flame the eight fires in this state of Arizona. Lord, those burning bushes that will burn on fire for you with your glory. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. All right, so if any of you, you're just wanting more and you're wanting that, Greg, are we okay? We're good to keep going. If you need to go, you can go. If you need to be dismissed, I know there are workers and things like that. If you need to be dismissed, you are absolutely dismissed and blessed. But if there are so, those of you that want, I'm just going to do some impartation prayer. I mean, there's just, is that okay? Did I do okay? Do I need to, we want, do I need to say anything else? Parents, get your children. This is, don't forget the children. Bring them back in. Bring them back in here, generation to generation. Amen. Altar workers, come on up and help Becca as she's ministering. Yes. I yeah. love you, Skyway. I love Arizona. Come back tonight. Be part some more tonight at 6, but come up with oh. the impartation right now. Defeating strongholds of the mind tonight, AIU. So, Lord, we 
just thank you as people make their way up. And I'm going to pray, and then we'll just release, like, impartation prayers. Is that okay? Yeah. How many of you say, I need that sword? <laughs> Listen, after what I've been through the past few months, I'm like, Lord, I need that sword. I'm wielding the sword. It's double-edged. It's breaking off and establishing covenant all at the same time. So, Lord, right now I just pray for all my brothers and sisters, Lord, that we take up that sword with the crown of glory and your light, Lord, and the light of the kingdom of God, that that will be seen upon us and that we are the light ourselves of the tabernacle of David and we are the burning bush that when we wield the sword, it'll come down and cut and establish covenant and break. So, Lord, I release that impartation. We're not going to carry trauma. We're not going to carry trauma from the past season. We're not going to do it. We're going to run into this new season in a new way that we have the faith to go 100%. As Pastor Greg, Apostle Greg was saying in the early service, 100% God, we're getting in the process. We're not abandoning the process. No, ooh, ooh, no more delay. No more, we might need, no more delays. Koya baba ha, kasha ta da da ba. Koya da 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 ba ha, kasha ta na na ma ha. Koya.